What's up guys, welcome back to another video. I recently hit 100,000 subscribers and made these cool 100,000 subscriber YouTube logos. Well, shortly after I hit 101,000 subscribers. So today I'm going to be making 101,000 subscriber YouTube logos. Now, if you guys missed the video on where I made these, I do show you exactly how I made them. And in today's video, I'm not showing you so much on making the foam pattern. So if you want to see that, definitely check out this video. I'll leave that link in the description below. Now for today's video, I'm going to be melting down these aluminum can remnants from my previous video from when I made the 100,000 subscriber logos. I melted down can ingots. Well, this is what's left. So today I'm going to be melting these to create the 101,000 subscriber YouTube logos. So let's get right to the video. All right, guys, as usual, I'm using the Vivor 12KG propane furnace that I use in most of my videos. I'm going to load those can remnants into the crucible and get this crucible started up. Later on in the video, I'm going to be adding a lot more aluminum cans to the melt because I'm not quite sure that I have enough aluminum or to fill out the molds that I'll be making today. So now that I got the furnace started up, I'm going to go back into the garage and put together the molds that I'll be preparing for today. This process is called the lost foam casting process. I'll take this foam pattern that I made that I coated with a layer of drywall mud, fill it in a container filling it with dry sand all the way to the top of the foam. This process is quite fascinating because the molten metal will burn away the foam and take its shape even when using dry sand instead of your normal foundry sand that most people use. I like to vibrate the container halfway to really get a good impact on that dry sand, really locking it into place. After filling it all the way to the top of the foam, I'll now place a pouring cup right over top of it. This is where I'll be pouring the molten metal into, and it'll contain it while flowing through the foam and burning it away. And then I'll add more sand surrounding it really lock that can into place. Now that the mold is finished, I'll head outside and add some aluminum cans to the mix. Now that I've melted down a bunch more cans, there's a lot of dross that needs to be removed from the top of the molten aluminum in the crucible. During the melt, I did try to submerge those aluminum cans into the molten metal. This will help reduce the amount of dross that you get.
Now that this pour is done, I'm going to load the crucible back into the furnace and make up another mold. Because if you saw in the beginning of the video, I made two of these YouTube logos. So I have one more of them to make. Now I won't bore you with the making of that mold since you already saw the first one. But let's add some more cans to the mix. And just like before, I'm now going to remove that dross that floated to the top of that molten metal inside of that crucible. Because I have more aluminum left over in the crucible, I'm going to be pouring the remainder of it into a graphite ingot mold that I'm preheating over top of the furnace. It's been quite some time since I poured this first one, so I'm now able to remove this from the mold and start cleaning it up. Recently I watched a video of a buddy of mine, Steve SRT8 on YouTube, and he used an air compressor to blow out the plaster from the metal. And now it's time to pull out the second one and see how that one came out. And like usual, it came out pretty good. I'm happy with it. This time, I'm not going to use the air to blow out the plaster.
This time I'm going to just use a toothbrush and try to brush out the plaster from the aluminum. Now after doing both of them, I do think blowing it out with the air compressor worked better, but I need a stronger air compressor because mine's pretty small. But nonetheless, they both came out pretty good. Now I'm going to put it in the vise and start cutting off that extra aluminum from the logo. After cutting that one, I will do the same exact thing to the other one and then follow up by using the Vivor belt sander. I'll use this to smooth away the area that I just used the hacksaw to cut away that extra aluminum. Now I'm going to be using two different techniques on cleaning these up. The first logo, I'm going to be using a Dremel tool that has a wire wheel attached to it. The second one, I'm just going to be using a 240 grit sanding disc on a drill. Now I did use the 240 grit sanding disc on both of them, as well as some polish. But the reason I didn't use the Dremel tool on the one is because I didn't want to take away the darkness from the recessed area, as you can see on this one. Now I do understand, I could have used the wire wheel on both of them, and later on applied an aluminum black finish to them to get that darkness that I need in the recessed area. But either way, I do think they both came out really good. Just as good as the 100,000 subscriber YouTube logos that I made in the previous weeks. If you guys liked the video, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below and let me know what you think. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Let's get to 102,000 subscribers. Oh wait, actually, I just hit 102,000 subscribers the day I made this video. So let's get to 103,000 subscribers.